The emphasis of badass Christianity is not on what doctrines one accepts to obtain salvation, but rather on what actions one commits that lead to communal liberation. This salvation, understood as liberation, is for everyone, oppressed and oppressor, slave and slaveholder, subjugated and subjugator. It's for you and yours, and it's for me and mine. But while many are called, few are chosen. Jesus warns his followers to enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad the road that leads to ruin, and many are those who enter in this fashion. But small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life. Few find it. Euro-American Christianity, with its history of oppression, enslavement, and subjugation, is on the broad road that passes through the wide gate. White Christian gatekeepers prevent the many from experiencing salvation liberation due to their complicity with social structures that bring misery to the vast majority of humanity, without regard to whatever commitment was made to Jesus or whichever sinner's prayer was recited. How tragic that many of those who profit on the backs of the world's wretched call themselves Christians and believe they are saved because of some cultural upbringing or some intellectual or emotional decision to acknowledge Jesus, as if Jesus needs anyone's acknowledgement. Not everyone who calls Jesus Lord will enter God's reign. On the ultimate day, when all must give an account, Jesus will respond, Away from me, you evildoers, for I never knew you. Only those who do the will of God will see the glories of God's reign. Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 through 23. Badass Christianity is nothing new. It has always been an attempt to do the will of God, regardless of the cost. And what, might you ask, is the will of God? According to the prophet Micah, it is simply, quote, to act with justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with one's God. Close quote. Micah chapter 6, verse 8. This is the day to decide. Don't be among those who are ignorant of their complicity in strengthening and expanding white privilege through their political power. Instead, choose to embrace the hopelessness caused by their actions. This does not mean giving up or curling up into a ball and doing nothing. The privileged, who can always afford to escape from reality, even if for only a moment, react to hopelessness this way. To embrace hopelessness means to accept the reality that sin, evil, and death trump our hope for utopias, especially the reality of how white hatred manifests itself among the oppressed and marginalized in destructive ways. To embrace hopelessness means to engage in survival praxis, knowing that the battle may be lost, but the struggle continues because there exists no other choice but to continue struggling. To embrace hopelessness means that, regardless of how the story ends, the struggle for justice is what defines our very humanity. Yes, I am hopeless, specifically because I'm not surprised by the white lash that ushered in the Trump presidency, or by my white compatriots who claim color blindness while voting for one who sees color all too clearly and wishes to eradicate it in the America he plans to make great again. Sadly, I don't believe things will change, even with the election of a new president, and even if the new president is liberal or progressive. I really don't. No, I will not hold hands and sing Kumbaya with white oppressors. Instead, I ask all who seek justice, especially whites willing to repent of their complicity with white privilege, to join me in solidarity as I choose to sing a different badass song. Let us all finally sing, Basta!